Hello my friends, my name is Dr. Sayed Kazmi. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk about idiopathic scrotal edema. So let's start. Idiopathic scrotal edema is a condition in which there is edema, subcutaneous edema of uh, the scrotal wall. Usually it happens in children who are aged between six months to three to four years. Uh, it's quite rare below six years of age and also above four years of age. Usually presents uh, with a sudden onset of swelling, discoloration, redness and discomfort in the scrotal area. Uh, most of these children, they are taken to a &E departments, obviously because of the fears involved with scrotal swelling. And again, most of the parents, they are worried about torsion. Because, and also for the uh, doctors, it is something which uh, you cannot afford to miss. So usually the history is a short history of uh, pain, uh, discomfort. The pain is not exquisite. It's, it depends on the uh, pain threshold of the child as well. In most of the cases, it would be a discomfort. So a couple of hours of discomfort with progressively increasing swelling and usually these swellings, as I told you, are associated with discoloration with some form of redness, uh, bluish hue to the skin or purplish discoloration. And uh, though in many cases you might find a history of uh, previous allergies to different food products, to different medicines, uh, maybe even to cats and dogs, uh, or a history of being bitten by some insect. Uh, but in most of the cases, there is no uh, reason. There is nothing in the past medical history. There is nothing, there is no inciting factors. So that's why we call it idiopathic because we don't know the reason. Nevertheless, uh, usually uh, parents are very much alarmed by this condition. Now, it's very important as a doctor that while you are examining these kids, you are able to differentiate it from testicular torsion. Because testicular torsion can also present with the same features. Again, it would usually present with testicular pain and swelling of uh, short duration. There are a few distinguishing features that can differentiate uh, idiopathic scrotal edema from testicular torsion. And uh, those features are number one that in uh, testicular torsion, the involvement is unilateral. So while you're examining, you will see that one half of the scrotum is involved. That would be red, it would be swollen, uh, it would be bluish or reddish in color. The testes usually, if you palpate one, the left or the right, it would be very tender to touch, exquisitely tender to touch. It's usually uh, a bit hard to uh, palpate as compared to the other one. And it's usually high riding. It's a bit elevated. While in idiopathic scrotal edema, usually the edema is diffuse, so it involves the whole of the scrotal wall and it also goes into the suprapubic area. It goes backward into the perineum, it goes upward into the suprapubic area and can involve the shaft and the penis. So usually there would be some degree of uh, uh, swelling, subcutaneous swelling of the shaft of the penis along with some phimosis and the child may be uh, experiencing difficulty in urinating. While that doesn't happen in case of uh, testicular torsion. So these are the uh, um, distinguishing features. The other thing, if you palpate the testes, even if uh, the scrotal wall is swollen on the both side, you will see that the testes are still quite soft. You might be able to palpate a few bilateral hydrocele. We call them secondary hydrocele, which can sometimes develop in idiopathic scrotal edema. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, whether they are present or absent, the testes themselves would be very soft. They might be a bit uh, tender to touch, but usually that the degree of pain is quite less as compared to what the child feels in uh, testicular torsion. And keep it in mind, testicular torsion doesn't involve the shaft in the penis. And usually if the shaft is involved, that goes more in favor of idiopathic uh, scrotal edema. So by clinical features, you can distinguish between these two uh, entities which, can, uh, which might present with very similar features. If you are in doubt, then the testicular ultrasound is a very good modality to differentiate between the two. Because if you do the uh, testicular ultrasound, especially the uh, Doppler 
study in that in case of torsion it would uh, actually show you that there is reduced blood flow to the effective testes while in case of idiopathic scrotal edema you will find that the blood flow to the testes is absolutely normal and at the same time the wall of the testes would be uh, enlarged not enlarged i mean they would be swollen because of the edema and that can be easily picked up on the ultrasound it's also very important that if you are suspecting idiopathic scrotal edema you do a urine dip because sometimes uh, nephrotic syndrome can also present with swelling of the genitals and if you find heavy proteinuria in urine you have to do blood test and see if it matches with hypoalbuminemia because that would go more in favor of nephrotic syndrome but usually if the urine is fine then you don't need to check for hypoalbuminemia because that doesn't favor a diagnosis of uh, nephrotic syndrome another one thing that can might make uh, idiopathic scrotal edema is hsp not scorning purpura so not scorning purpura can present with uh, similar features uh, just like idiopathic scrotal edema but in that case uh, you also might find a vasculitic painful rash on the buttocks or on the lower extremities with pain in the ankles or pain in the abdomen as well and the urine might show Uh, proteinuria or might show hematuria or it might not show but nevertheless clinically you might see features which are suggesting uh, hsp if the uh, diagnosis of uh, idiopathic scrotal edema is confirmed either by clinical examination or by uh, ultrasound studies the uh, treatment is uh, just supportive so you just have to wait for 3 to 4 days uh, within that the edema subsides um if it happens in older children obviously some form of scrotal support can also help uh, but since the age is usually between 6 months to 4 years so you can't do anything in that uh, if it's associated with a bit of itching or discomfort oral uh, antihistamines can also be tried uh, though usually they do not give uh, satisfying uh, results uh, you still have to wait for, for for 5 days and the treatment uh, you know the supportive treatment just cures the condition on its own if you are not sure and are not able to differentiate between the testicular torsion then it's very important that you involve the urology at the very beginning uh, because uh, in case if clinical examination cannot differentiate and the ultrasound modality is not uh, available and there is an element of uncertainty then obviously torsion takes uh, you know it takes importance over everything else and the child has to be taken to the theater and uh, the scrotum sac has to be opened to see or to rule out uh, uh, torsion that is unfortunately how it ha- it has to be but nevertheless if you are unsure do involve the urologist at the very beginning so this was all about idiopathic scrotal edema i hope you have understood uh, this uh, condition if you have liked my videos uh, please uh, do subscribe to my channel uh, share these videos with your friends and if you got any questions or queries put it down in the comment section below and uh, i will try my level best to answer your questions uh, thank you very much and have a good day bye bye